Hello everyone, this is Mandeep Singh Shekhawat and today we are discussing how will you troubleshoot a slow server issue. So let's start with the problem statement then we will move to how you can actually troubleshoot that issue. So what is that problem statement? Your server processing is slow. Your, the server which you are using or the machine you are using, the processing is too slow, it's kind of hanging. So how will you be able to improve that processing time and troubleshoot it so that like what is the reason behind the processing time lag? Like? okay so the processing time is taken more than the expected so what's the reason how will you troubleshoot it so what are the specific actions you can take let's move on to that what are the troubleshooting steps you can take let's move on to that uh, now uh, looking at the system are you able to figure out if any specific application is making server slow so sometimes you uh, get kind of notification that this uh, application is consuming a lot of resources let's say you are uh, running Android Studio on 1 GB RAM machine so you will not be able to do that you can run it but you will be kind of uh, like not optimizingly uh, run that system and your system will be in the hanged state so can we kill that application first of all because your resources which are available on your machine are not supporting the uses of that particular application so can you kill it that's the first thing if you can kill it then well and good uh, if that application is required by the system now let's say uh, this specific application is needed by the system then what you can do does that application require more resources than provided by system or uh, this is the example we already discussed if that's the case then there is the only one solution that you have to increase the resources available on the machine let's say your machine was running on 1 GB RAM then you have to increase it let's say to 4 GB Let's say it was running on 8 cores, then you have to make it 16 cores in the context of CPU. Similar can be in the case of disk, like whatever issue we were facing, we were discussing how you can check on the specific resource. But on the, any of the bottlenecks you are facing, you have to increase that if you are able to figure out that I need to run that specific application on my machine no matter what, because that machine uh, will not be of any use if I'm not able to run that application. So we have to anyway run it and we have to also make the processing fast then what you can do you can increase the resources available on that system one example is uh, another thing could be can you uh, close some of the sub resources from the application let's say you are running a chrome browser you have opened like hundreds of tabs and multiple windows so can you close some of them to uh, optimize uh, like uh, reduce some of the memory consumption because all the processes which are running will be in the memory so can you close some of the processes so that your resource consumption is little bit optimized and it might improve the processing time of your machine now if we are not able to figure out that which specific application is making it slow and your entire system is slow i don't know what is making it slow then how can you move forward with it okay so there are some general steps which you can take first thing is we have to check on the resource matrix when we say a uh, resource matrix we mean cpu memory disk uh, memory when we say uh, we will check memory along with the heap memory as well okay so uh, you have to validate on these uh, you might have some kind of metrics you can use some kind of commands on your machine so any way which is available with you if it's like a large application which you are running you might be publishing some kind of metrics on let's say cloudwatch so you can check those metrics if uh, which of the resource consumption is on the higher side so you can, uh, first first thing what you have to do is you have to check the resource matrix once you have uh, checked the resource matrix of entire system you can check for specific process okay which specific process is causing that you are able to figure out that cpu uh, load is high it is not it is more than 90 percent it is hitting 99 percent now you have to figure out what kind of thing which is running on your system is making that happen what kind of process is running on system which is so cpu intensive that it is making that system to go above 90 percent it is making to reach hit to 99 percent so you have to be able to figure out that process so what you have to do is uh, one way is uh, using a top command okay if you are able to ssh into a machine we already discussed in our ssh video how can you troubleshoot the ssh which uh, ssh issues so you can uh, refer that to get specific details around as such but once you have as such into your system you can use top command to get the list of processes and what is the consumption of the uh, resources for that specific process you will get details like PID then what is the percent CPU utilization what is the uh, amount of memory which is being consumed so all those details you can get by our top command 
okay so this is the just the description if process is not required let's say you are able to figure out a specific process which is not required by your system and it's consuming a lot of resources you can directly kill it uh, this is the general command to kill a process kill pid pid is the process id which you will get via your top command only uh, there is a similar command to top which is ps so top command uh, gives you a dynamic view so if you type in top command there uh, as the uh, consumption varies from process to process it will be keep on changing ps gives you a static view of the process information once you are done with that what you have to do is like you are, you are not able to uh, validate anything from the process information what you can do then is there any background process running on your machine okay so there are demons uh, which are which might be required to uh, run any application on your system so is there any first thing which you have to validate is is there any, any unwanted daemon okay you uh, might have started some daemon on your machine two days back but you don't require it now but it's still running in the background so you can kill it directly so that's one thing another thing is let's say you uh, require the daemon on your machine so can you optimize the execution of that daemon let's say the daemon continuously runs after five seconds so can you optimize to make it to run after one minute each so that kind of one optimization what it will do like it's kind of process execution only uh, the daemon is running it will execute some kind of process on your system uh, let's say some kind of logic which uh, runs in background for your system health check or anything can you increase that time from five seconds can you make it to one minute can you make it to five minutes can you do that so that's the one way to look into it are there any zombie process if there are any zombie processes you can kill them uh, moving to another point disk utilization we discussed around uh, cpu utilization and memory now let's discuss about disk utilization it might happen that uh, the disk which is available on your machine is not uh, as per the requirement okay, my, the application which are running or, on your machine requires 50 GB of space but you only you have allocated on your machine is 25 GB so how can you uh, fix that uh, one thing which like how can you uh, get what is the values is the com via command you can check via du and df command disk uses and disk free if again if you have metrics on your let's say cloudwatch console or any of the other uh, visualization tool you are using if you have metrics specifically you can check graphs okay once you are able to validate that we have to uh, figure out what kind of uh, processes which are executing require this kind of space and if there is any unwanted data which is present on your machine if there is any unwanted data present on your machine you have to delete it another thing is i related to inode so first let's say uh, let's understand what is inode so any file which you create in a system is mapped to a inode to store any file metadata let's say where this file is specifically located on the machine so any kind of metadata which you want to store is mapped to a inode now in case you are not left with any inode uh, this is a very less possibility that this will happen but let's say this happens so in case you are not left with any inode though you have disk space available in that case you will not be able to create new files why because you have no inodes left because every time you create a file you have to map that file to a specific inode so that you have all the metadata which you can keep related to that file so in case you are not uh, you don't have any available inodes you will not be able to create new files and if any processes if any kind of process require creation of file you will not be able to create that and the process will be going to a stuck state okay so the process will keep on waiting that uh, there will be uh, some available inodes which uh, it can use but it will not be available so you can say it is reaching to kind of deadlock state waiting and in the stuck position to do any further processing and it will be again in a stuck state okay <clears throat> uh, to solve this issue can we delete any unused files how can you figure out uh, what are unused files you have to browse through your directories you have to check on like what and uh, what is the data which is not required on your machine which you can delete so you can check on directories specifically like uh, you can use the commands like which kind of uh, uh, like what specific directories are using maximum space and if there are unwanted you can directly delete them if there is any certain files 
uh, which are not required by your system you can remove them so this will uh, help to free up i nodes which will help to improve the performance which might help to improve the perf uh, performance uh, last resort could be rebooting the system so uh, it, IT is general saying that <laughs> if uh, anything goes wrong, let's like what's uh, what's harm in rebooting the system. So sometimes in most of the cases it helps to uh, resolve the issue. So you can try rebooting your system. Like uh, that will lead to creation of new state from the beginning of a system, and that might help to remove any of the unwanted things from your system, and your uh, like the performance of system might improve. Now let's say you have done everything. You have checked CPU utilization, you have checked uh, processes, you have checked memory, you have checked disk and there is no action which you can take on this system. But you want to improve the performance, right? You have to improve the uh, performance so that the applications on that system can run smoothly. And what you can do in that case is you have to improve the resources like we discussed earlier as well. If, you, if there is a CPU constraint, you, if you require more CPU if you, uh, the applications are cpu intensive then you can use uh, cpu cores if it's a ram intensive then you can increase ram if it's a disk issue then increase our uh, disk uh, let's say you are using m4 dot large instance so you can move to m4 dot 4x large instance okay so depending on the requirements let's say it's for the uh, cpu intensive source so you can move to cpu uh, c4 instances uh, similarly uh, you can choose the type of instance this i am talking in context of aws but uh, you are getting the gist right that uh, we have to make uh, like you have to increase the resources which are available on the machine so this is the in general discussion or in in general way you can try to troubleshoot the issue and improve the performance of your system we will meet again in our next troubleshooting video till then stay safe bye bye